This video will show how we installed 240 volt service to charge our electric Nissan LEAF in our garage. After opening our circuit panel and looking at the availability of space, we saw that there were five spaces for more circuit breakers. However, after we took off the panel, we noticed that there was only one bus bar available. What's up with that? The solution was to install what's known as a tandem breaker. You have two outputs for 15 amps at 120 volts and one output for 40 amps at 240 volts. Because this installation took place in a garage, my interpretation of any garage electrical wiring is that it must be 48 inches above grade and it must also be uh, protected by a GFCI circuit. Since there was no room in our main panel for a GFCI breaker, a double pole breaker at 240 volts, we discovered that it was necessary to install a sub-panel where a GFCI breaker could be installed so that if ever there was um, any sort of a short with the ground, it would automatically trip and the power would go out. Our initial installation involved the installation of a NEMA 1450 um, electrical outlet that was the, the same size as what you'd see for your stovetop range. Uh, it's one of those four plug, four prong um, receptacles that takes up a two gang box. So that's why a two gang box was installed here. After we discovered that the base Nissan LEAF, which is what we own, did not uh, accept a 30 amp service, it only took a 15, it only needed 15 amp service, we decided to return the more expensive charger that was redundant back to Amazon and then buy one of the less expensive 15 amp charger uh, cables, as you can see here. It also required a different outlet, and I was fortunate enough to find the right kind of plate on Amazon as well that included one round service, uh, one round outlet for this electrical service, and then a blank dummy plate so that both plates were covered and we didn't have to patch the drywall. One other thing that we decided it would be a good idea to do was to install surge protection. We don't have a surge protector in the entire house. Those are a little expensive. They're about $100 a piece, and they require some fancy wiring in the circuit breaker box, which I didn't really feel like doing anymore. Thank you, Cat. So we decided to, we opt for this $25, $30 something. They're available at Lowe's. It's a square D adapter that you attach onto the side of a, of a panel and you wire up the three wires and it just sits there, looks pretty and has a little green light. We decided that that was a lot less expensive than having to suffer from any sort of potential consequences from a power surge that could happen and sometimes does happen here where we live. Incidentally, when my wife and I were discussing this, we were doing so during the uh, storms that were happening right after Hurricane Irma, and she asked me, would we be putting surge protection on this electric car charging? And about half a second later, the power went out. So obviously that decision was made immediately there in that moment. So this is a, a general layout and a setup of how a typical car charging situation for an EV can work. It is obviously very uh, fortunate for us that the vehicle parked uh, next to the circuit panel so that the wiring did not have to go very far. I hope this has been informative. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.